Hi there, this is Mrs. Malchaney and today we're going to make a foldable to help us remember the conversion steps for fraction, decimal, and percent. So to create this foldable, you're going to need a sheet of paper, a pencil, and a pair of scissors. So take a moment and gather those materials. To start off your foldable, you need to take your paper and you need to fold it hamburger style. Take your crease and match it up with the ends that are loose and fold it again. Now that we have our skinny piece of paper, we're going to turn it and we're going to fold that in half. And then we're going to unfold. Take your bottom edge and fold it towards the inside line that we have already folded here. Turn your paper, take the other side and fold it or in towards the middle. So now your foldable will open like this. Take your pencil and we're going to write F, D, and P and F for fraction. A D in the middle for decimal and a P off to the side for percent. Okay, now that you have that written, you need to take your scissors and you're going to cut this folded line here. So you're only cutting through that top sheet of paper so it can still open, but the rest of it is still not cut. Turn and you can do that to the other side on the same fold. So, when you look at your foldable, each compartment can open. Okay, let's start with our conversions between our fraction to decimal. So, when we do this, we have a numerator and a denominator of a fraction. We're going to divide our numerator by our denominator. So, if we open this up, we'll show the steps for without a calculator and with the calculator. So without a calculator, we'll go in the top, and then right below this fold is going to go with the calculator. So without a calculator, you're going to do the long division. So you have a numerator and a denominator of a fraction. The numerator is going to go inside of the division and the denominator goes on the outside. So if we look at an example of this, say we have the fraction 1 half. 1 is going to go inside and 2 is going to go outside. Now because 2 can't be divided into 1, we have to add a decimal place and a 0. 2 goes into 10 5 times, and 5 times 2 is 10. We do our subtraction and we have a remainder of 0. So that leaves us with a decimal of 0 0.5. We can also do this with the calculator. You are just going to divide the numerator by the denominator. So again, we have the numerator and the denominator. We're going to take the numerator divided by the denominator in our calculator. So we can do the same example of 1 half, but instead of doing the long division, we're going to type it in our calculator 1 divided by 2. And we get the answer of 0 0.5. Okay, our next conversion that we're going to do is decimal to percent. We have two options when we're converting decimals to percents. We can move our decimal place two spaces to the right, 
or we can multiply by 100. So again, we're going to do it without the calculator section and with the calculator. So without a calculator, we need to move the decimal two places to the right. And if you need to, add a little arrow underneath right to remember which direction right is. And you're going to add a percent sign. So if we do an example of this, we have 0 0.25. We can move our decimal two places to the right, and that gives us 25, and we add a percent sign. We can also do the same thing with the calculator. When you take a decimal and you turn it to a percent with the calculator, you can multiply by 100. And then you add a percent sign. So if we look at an example of this again, we'll take our 0 0.25, just like we did in our example above. But instead of just moving the decimal two places, we're going to use our calculator, say, multiply by 100. And we get the same answer of 25. And be smarter than your calculator and add your percent sign. The next conversion we're going to do is percent backwards to decimal. So we can move our decimal two places to the left, or we can divide by 100. So like before, we're going to have a with the calculator section and without the calculator. So without the calculator, we're going to move the decimal two places to the left. You can add a little arrow underneath the left so you remember which direction left is. And you remove the percent sign. So if we look at an example of this, we have 0. Point, oh, we're starting with the percent, not with the decimal. My fault. Let's start with 75%. We want to take our percent and turn it into a decimal. Our decimal point is at the end because the percent is a whole number. Move our decimal two places to the left. So we have 0. 0.75 and we removed the percent sign. So our decimal is just 0 0.75. We can do the same thing with the calculator. When we do it with the calculator, we're just going to divide the decimal by 100. And then we remove the percent sign. So we'll use the same percentage. We have 75%. We'll divide that by 100. And our calculator will give us 0 0.75. And we need to remember we don't need the percent sign anymore. The last conversion that we are going to do is decimal to fraction. When we convert a decimal into a fraction, 
If there are any whole numbers in the decimal, they become the whole number in the fraction. The decimal places after the decimal point become the numerator. The place value of the decimal becomes the denominator. And then we always remember to simplify our fraction. So, the same rules for with a calculator and without a calculator apply. So there's not going to be much difference between having a calculator and not having a calculator in this section. So we're going to label this with slash without calculator. Because the only thing that's going to be different is when you simplify. So the first step, the whole number in the decimal becomes the whole number in the fraction. Okay. The second step, all the numbers to the right of the decimal goes in the numerator of the fraction. If you need to, draw your little arrow to show the direction for which right is. Step three, the place value of the decimal numbers become the denominator of the fraction. And our last step that we can't forget is to simplify. All right, so let's look at an example of this. It's a lot of writing. So say we have the decimal 4 and 15 hundredths or 4.15. The 4, that's the whole number, is going to become the whole number of the fraction. The 15, which is after the decimal point, it's to the right of the decimal point, becomes the numerator. Now, we need to figure out the place value of that 15 if you didn't know it was 15 hundredths. The trick I like to use, and I'm going to do an example over here, I'm going to say 1.234. The 1 is in the 1's place, so I put a little itty bitty 1 underneath that, and you can put a 0 under the 2, therefore the, the 2 is in the tenths place. The 3 is in the hundredths place and the four is in the thousandths place. So I can use my little trick, one under the ones place, zero, zero, which is 100, which tells me that the five is in the hundredths place. So that becomes the place value that goes underneath. So I can draw a little arrow from my hundred and tell me that's where it came from. 
And then my last step is to simplify. So we have 4 and 15 over 100. Our fraction ends in a 5 and a 0. So I can divide by 5 on the top and on the bottom. And it gives me a 4 and 3 twentieths. And that cannot simplify any further. So that is my final answer. So you can use this foldable to help you study for your test. You can help it with your homework. And I hope you enjoy using it and that this video was helpful. Have a good night.